welcome to another webcast with Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. My name is Seth David, and I'll be your host for the next 10 minutes. And we're completing our series today on how to account for your transactions in Excel. This is for people who don't want to use QuickBooks just yet or don't know how to use it and don't you can't afford to spend the time right now because you're starting a business and you're very busy and you just want something that you're familiar with like Excel and you want a template you can use to track your sales and your transactions and for the past few weeks we've been building this and showing you how to develop a template in Excel that template is available by the way for download in our learning center it's only eleven dollars and of course it comes with all the tutorials and it will include this one as well embedded in it so that you not only get the template but you get one easy location to find all the tutorials that you can watch so you can learn how to use the template and there's one thing for sure you're going to learn a lot about Excel and develop a lot of skills in Excel based on doing this not to mention getting a little bit of knowledge about accounting and some knowledge of debits and credits without further ado I wanted to finish this up by getting into more detail on the pivot tables because that's where we kind of left off last week and I didn't really have enough time to really get deeply into it we ran one quick pivot table so I want to try and run one or two more pivot tables for you and review what we did last Last week just to show you how powerful that is how incredibly powerful it is when you understand how to use the pivot tables to report on the information that you've gathered by doing all this data entry and that of course is the point of it in the end is to be able to get good information out of it once you've put information into it so with that in mind I'm going to share my screen with you like I always do and we're gonna get right into things here very quickly I'll show you how to uh, get to our website to download the template you come over here to nerdenterprises.com and click on the learning center and then you're gonna scroll down a little here and you're gonna find the downloads and productivity tools and right in the top row there you'll see the financial accounting template click on that and it's really easy I've got the tutorials embedded here as well add it to your cart the site will take your payment and email you a link that you can use to download the spreadsheet so you'll literally have it in minutes and you'll be ready to get started you'll be off and running using this template learning how to use Excel and, and you'll become a very powerful Excel user guaranteed after learning how to use the stuff that we went over in these past few webcasts let's go right over to the template and what we want to do is we've got a bunch of transaction information in here that I dumped from QuickBooks from a sample file and we're gonna to go to insert we're in the transaction register we're gonna to go to insert pivot table it recognizes I'm in the range I do it in a new sheet okay and now it gives me the generic pivot table template over here on the right are the field headers from the table that I used and down here is the section where I'm gonna to want to tell it how to pivot first thing is I want to report on the amounts now for some reason QuickBooks thinks I want to count so I have to change the value field settings to a sum and then I want to format my numbers to make it nice and easy to read so I want negative numbers showing up in red I want to use my comma separator okay and okay again and now essentially it's giving me a, a net total of all the amounts that are in that transaction register meaningless information at this point I also and you can look in the transaction register when you purchase the template to see the formula that I wrote but I wrote a formula that looks at the date and gives me the month and the year separately so that I can report on things that way and here's where that becomes powerful a lot of times I want to look at my expenses by month so I'm gonna drop my month down here is my column labels and already you see it breaks down my totals for the each month then I want to put my destination account here in my row labels because now I can see by account what's going where and there's my income now the other thing I can do is say I really don't want to look at income now I just want to look at expenses so I drop down the filter and I find service income it's alphabetical I uncheck it I don't need any blanks either and I click OK so now I can literally look at expenses by month I can come over here and freeze my panes under the view menu the view tab rather freeze my panes so now I can see January expenses were 28,000 and so on and so forth now if I want to let's rename this and call this income and expenses and then over here what I can do is I can insert a bunch of rows and I can actually insert another pivot table because this way I can have income separate so let's come back over here go to insert pivot table this time it's in an existing worksheet so I tell it the location right at the top there 
It needs a few spaces though. So I need a few spaces in case I want to put a filter on my pivot table. So I say OK. And it's yelling at me because it can't overlap. So I need to insert more spaces. So let's just do that real quick. Then I'll come in here and let's try it again. Existing. Start me down here at about row 5. That should work. Again, I want my months across the top. I need my amounts. I got to change that to a sum. Okay. And then I have my uh, destination account again here. And let's do this. Let's put the destination account in the filter. And now I only want service income. So I say OK. And now it should let me also put that in my row labels. And it still thinks it's going to overlap with the other report. So I need even more spaces in here. So we'll have to play around with that some more. And you can play around with that yourself. But you get the idea. I need more space, but I can drop the income in there. You know, and the other thing is, to keep it simple, and I was trying to get fancy here, and I didn't plan on doing that, so let's just put it in here and include the income. It won't look as pretty, but we'll still be able to see our net. Knowing that our income is in there, we've got a loss. Let's freeze my panes again. I've got a loss here for January. Scrolling over so I can see my net income for each month just by setting up a pivot table like this. We've got a few more minutes. Let's do a quick one on sales. I don't have my sales data in here anymore because I cleared it out for the template. So never mind that. Let's go back here and let's play around with some other choices. Let's say I don't care about looking at it by month. I can uncheck this. I can drop my year in my column labels. Now everything in this case happens to be from the year 2013, but now I can see my net income for the year is 4400 based on the transactions we've entered. The other thing is we can use filters. So let's say I want to see, actually here's another one before I even look at the filters. Let's say that I want to see instead of expenses, I want to see what I paid and to whom. What I can do is I can get rid of the destination account here and I can drop the name in. Now in a click, I can see the same kind of information, but in terms of who the money came from. The income's blank because we don't have names in there. We just have deposits. But I can see what I paid to accounting firm, Anderson's hardware, and so on down the line. So in two seconds, by just changing information here, I can get other valuable information. I can see what I've paid to each of my vendors here in a click. So that's the other way this is powerful. And what I encourage you to do is I encourage you to play around with this yourself. Because now let's look at a filter. Let's take the date. And let's drop that into my report filter box here. And what that does is it lets me filter my results. I can choose select multiple items. And down here, first of all, we get rid of the dash. We get rid of the blanks. And let's say, let's say I didn't have the month option. And I only wanted to see the last quarter of the year. What I can do is I can uncheck everything, scroll down. And I want everything from October 1st down. Unfortunately, there's no quick way to do this. You can use your keyboard. Down arrow, shift, uh, space bar. That's a little faster way to get these things selected. Just use your down arrow and hitting your space bar is the same thing as if you clicked on it in this case. Then click OK. And now what I've got is I've got a report that shows me what I paid to each vendor just for the last quarter of the year. And now it may be more meaningful rather than having the year in there to do it by month. So now I can see for each vendor what I paid October, November, December. You can format these so you can center justify them. And this is how you can start to get really good, powerful information out of something like this. So I hope this makes sense to you. As always, I'll mention we're available for private consult. If you want a little more direction on how to do this kind of stuff, give us a call at 866-945-8070 or visit us on the web at www.nerdenterprises.com. And I look forward to seeing you around on the web.